All right, kids, a few weeks ago, when I presented the first time the term black on black crime was put in print, y'all may not have realized it, but it made me only the second person to ever talk about black on black crime since it was mentioned in the Chicago Daily Defender in August of 1970. Now, I talk about it a lot. Black people talk about black on black crime all the time. Any idea that we don't is just one of those things some just say for really no reason. Others hear it and accept it without looking into it. It's become like other phrases and figures of speech that we use every day despite not knowing where they come from. Turn a blind eye, beat around the bush, the cat's out of the bag. And oh, adults with braces are so cool and I can barely even notice yours, Jeff. And you've made so much progress already. I mean, people keep leaving that one in my comment section for some reason. Instead of explaining what those idioms mean, I'll just try to apply them to today's topic. Besides, who even talks like that? Anyways, the article that I alluded to earlier described the day when the Reverend Jesse Jackson and attorney E. Duke McNeil rebuked city, county, state, and national elected officials for, quote, their silence and ineffectiveness in dealing with the present black-on-black -black crime crisis. Again, that was more than five decades ago. Could be said about now. At the same time, according to the editor, Pierre Gilmont, quote, they effectively slapped the collective wrists of Chicago's white press for its failure to enunciate the problem as the black community sees it. But there it is. Black people not only trying to do something about the crime crisis, but getting people in power involved too, which is also the same as it is today. So I'm not sure of where the black people don't do anything about it thing came from either. However, this helps me understand where people got similar ideas. Like Chicago, like most of the the shootings are young black men killing other young black men. Is that not correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Much more than, than what the cops do. Why doesn't anybody talk about that? Well, I mean, uh, why aren't there, uh, you know, a, a, a hundred giant black celebrities who would have the respect of those people saying, what are you doing to yourselves? But the media, the media doesn't report black on black crime. The media doesn't report black on white crime. They only report white on black crime where's the noise at where's the protests where's the mainstream media talking about that where is it that's what i want to know you want to make the media go away just mention black on black crime today we're going to talk about whether or not the media mentions black on black crime because as was just shown a talk show host a political pundit a sports commentator and a cartoon pretty much forms of media but whatever says they don't there's a notion that the media only seems to care if a white person or a white cop commits violence against a black person but it usually comes without proof and i'm gonna need some stats facts and figures to support this well a little while ago, I came across this chart here floating around the internet that people see and evidently just accept without looking into it, which is what we're going to focus on today. I mean, it has numbers in it, should count for something, right? So this meme claims to show interracial crime incidents from 2018, featuring a cameraman highlighting and only highlighting white on black violence when black on white, Hispanic on white, and white on Hispanic violent crime is far worse. Now, what immediately jumps out to me is that Hispanic is not a race, it's an ethnicity. You can be Hispanic and black, Hispanic and white, and so on. Plus, seeing how the definition of violent crime typically includes rape, sexual assault, robbery, assault, and murder, the top end of the y-axis is a little low. When doing a racism on the internet, memes like this could go straight to murder and homicide. Bold strategy, let's see if it works out for them. So. Judd Legum, independent journalist and writer of Popular Information, along with Tesnum Zecharia, already fact-checked this. They wrote that this meme has been in circulation for years by racists since it first appeared in The Blaze in 2019. They add that one major issue with the chart is that it excludes white on white and black on black. Crimes by white people against other white people are by far the most common type of crime in the United States. Of course it is. There are more white people in America than any other racial demographic. Also, this meme doesn't present rates based on size of population, nor does it normalize the data. Here's the Department of Justice's 2018 Crime Victimization Report. It shows that there were more than 3.5 million violent intra-racial incidents among white people in 2018. That y-axis wasn't nearly 
tall enough. And yes, the percentages seen here and here from the same source that this meme claims to get its info from proves that the rate of violent incidents among black people and among white people are similar. And the rate of interracial violent incidents between the two are similar. Legum and Zachariah would go on to say that DAC, a Belgian media site, debunked the meme in 2020. The outlet also created its own version of the chart, which includes crimes where the perpetrator and victim are the same race, showing that what's being passed around the internet trying to claim that media has a narrow view on violent crime needs to have a wider lens itself. Not sure of where this camera person comes from, but someone with Photoshop skills put a camera operator further back so they can record this cameraman and everything he's missing. I was reminded of this dismissiveness when the nameless faceless Twitter account, End Wokeness, tweeted out this image saying, perspective is everything to its 1.3 million followers. Legum and Zecharia saw it there too, getting a lot of views, likes, retweets, and comments in the process including this one from Chief Twit himself, Elon Musk, who said, Odd, why would the media misrepresent the real situation in such an extreme degree? And I want to pause here in order to be clear. The wealthiest man in the world who owns and operates that bird app and bird website that he's killing with one stone chose to reply to a tweet that he wasn't added in, promoting the idea that there's anti-white bias in the media without looking into it or even fact checking at all. If Elon would have seen the replies to that initial tweet that he responded to from End Wokeness, he would have gotten some context about the Bureau of Justice Statistics data. If he looked at the comment section under his own tweet, he would have seen this Twitter user posting links to studies about this topic. I read them, it's what I do. A 2010 study called Race and Ethnic Representation of Lawbreakers and Victims in Crime News, a national study of television coverage, looked at the reported race or ethnicity of violent crime perpetrators and victims using a national, more generalizable sample of local news stories from a random sample of TV newscasts from 2002 to 2003. It said, quote, we did not find evidence of a significant difference in the number of portrayals of white perpetrators relative to black people in our base models. To us, this suggests a relative overreporting of black people compared to white people. Furthermore, our basic analysis revealed that racial and ethnic minorities are less likely to be portrayed as victims than white people. Notably, this finding is consistent with one, racial privileging arguments that greater attention is given to the victimization of white people than to non-whites. Two, power structure claims that white owners of media are more interested in presenting news about white victims. And three, the normal crimes perspective that white victims are more likely to be reported because they are more unusual, particularly white female victims, or because news is more about powerful groups. The fact that victimization of white females is disproportionately at the hands of white males than males of other colors, rendering news reports of black suspects and defenders irrelevant in the context of white female victimization. Well, that was just one study that merely viewed TV news. How about something a little more up to date that focuses on written media and articles? When Global Strategy Group produced Innocent Until Proven Guilty, a look at media coverage of criminal defendants in the US, they conducted an audit among 10 criminal cases, five cases featuring a white defendant and five featuring a black defendant. All cases had criminal proceedings that occurred in the seven years prior. They found that Disparities exist between the types of images used for black and white defendants. For example, imagery of a black defendant is more likely to include a mugshot or prison jumpsuit, while being less likely to be shown wearing a suit than their white counterparts. Additionally, labels and language used to characterize defendants painted by a story. White victims were nearly four times more likely than black victims to have a photo with friends or family included alongside coverage. Lastly, among other things, in articles written about white defendants, quotes most often came from friends and family, while judges and lawyers' quotes were used for black defendants. You know what? How about news and articles from today-ish? Like, literally, as of me writing this, I had been watching local news off and on since early May when In Wokeness posted this chart to see if the media mentions black on black crime. So, I chose Channel 10 here in Columbus mostly because it comes on at noon after Let's Make a Deal and The Price is Right. Lastly, not a word, but it should be because of Yolanda Harris. 
but she's an evening news anchor, so no distractions. And while this isn't the most scientific thing I've ever done, but could be the topic of a dope video in the future, what I gathered from these 20 random news stories that I picked of men, women, and children committing violent crime, teens shooting teens, adults shooting adults, teens and adults shooting each other, outside, inside, on the highway, at grocery stores, some guy shooting himself at a movie theater, victims surviving and being killed, is that while 10TV News never said the phrase black on black crime, they did show surveillance and police body camera footage when available. And 10TV showed the mugshots of the accused, the court proceedings of those charged and or convicted, and mentioned the names of both victims and perpetrators. With all of that said, the Bill Mars, Jesse Waters, Stephen A. Smiths, and family guys of the world. I want them to tell me, if the media shows footage of a black person suspected of or proven to have committed a violent crime, is that mentioning black on black crime? If the media shows the mugshot of a black person charged and convicted for committing a violent crime, is that mentioning black on black crime? If the media says the names of people, victims, and perpetrators, and their black sounding names, is that mentioning black on black crime? Yolanda Harris, black sounding name. There's more studies that support this video where that comes from. People gotta ask themselves, again, why would the media, that being a cable show, news, a podcast, and a cartoon, misrepresent the real situation to such an extreme degree? Why are the people who don't see color, who advocate for race neutrality, yearning for a colorblind society, suddenly wanting this kind of equality? Are the same people who accuse me of only watching CNN admitting that they get their info from cable news? None of what I said today address that kind of media. However, if they feel like there's media bias against white people when it comes to violent crime, or the news doesn't talk about black on black crime, makes me question what they're watching. Also, where do they think they learned that phrase from in the first place? As Governor Michael Dukakis vetoed mandatory sentences for drug dealers, he vetoed the death penalty. His revolving door prison policy gave weekend furloughs to first degree murderers not eligible for parole. While out, many committed other crimes like kidnapping and rape, and many are still at large. Now Michael Dukakis says he wants to do for America what he's done for Massachusetts. America can't afford that risk. I was angry. I was very angry because I saw through it right away. I saw that the ad where they had these guys coming out of prison, and the black guy was the only one who looked up the camera. So. I I said, ah, I said, these are diabolical minds behind this thing. It was Willie Horton who murdered a boy in a robbery, stabbing him 19 times. Despite a life sentence, Horton received 10 weekend passes from prison. Horton fled, kidnapped a young couple, stabbing the man and repeatedly raping his girlfriend. Everybody saw how provocative it was. And so it got a tremendous amount of free airtime. Who knows how many times hooked up to jumper cables got repeated in South Carolina, and who knows how many times Willie Horton's scowling, angry face of a killer was televised absolutely for free. The news. Reporting on black on black crime got Reagan, H.W. Bush, and Clinton elected as president. Gotta be tough on crime in order to protect middle America. And when Obama didn't fix the issue with his black self, it was used against him. I talked about the fact that proximity crime has been an issue at least since the year 1900. No administration has solved it. Do they want to? Going back to that chart, even if the camera in this debunked meme was focusing on white on black crime, the majority dominant group killing the smaller minority group could or should be a lot of people's perspective, which is everything. Just look at median net worth between families. That's how we got here. Before I go, as for the why aren't we marching in the streets when one of our own is killed by someone who looks like us thing? We are, we do. Here's the problem what you said. You just said, quote, I don't see any, any uh, protests in Chicago of black on black. You don't know anybody in Chicago. You haven't even been there. You, how, see, this is the problem when you say I haven't seen it. If you ain't been there and you don't know anybody and you likely don't follow them on social media, you wouldn't see it. But the reality is, it does exist. So, Philip, never ever come on television and say, well, I don't see it if your eyes are closed because you never opened them. We have literally had 
the people on this show live from protests. So for you to say, well, I don't see it, you try to act like it doesn't exist. It does. So if you've never made the effort to find out that they are protesting, how can you then criticize folk for saying they're not protesting? That plus donating time and money, giving to fundraisers, basketball tournaments, fish fries and cookouts, bake sales dedicated to stop the violence. As I mentioned two weeks ago, there's rap songs about it. There's meetings, nonprofit organizations, movements, gun buybacks, discussing it in church and barbershops and community centers. We talk about it all the time. We're not turning a blind eye. There's a few Twitter threads from The Roots Michael Harriet that explains all this better than I am. I'll put them in the description of this video. Don't forget, when you see data about violence in black communities, it involves more than the perpetrator and victim. There are friends and families, loved ones reeling at someone losing their livelihood in prison and or simply put, losing their lives. Put it to you like this. When my brother was shot and killed almost seven years ago, it was all over the local news. I wanted justice no matter what the shooter looked like and we got it. That black man was caught a few hours later. According to prevailing notions in this country, seeing how my brother Jamie was black and Kalon Lampkin is black, I stopped caring. I didn't want to do anything about it. I don't talk about black on black crime. Beating around the bush? I'm not showing studies that prove that when you control for segregated communities and concentrated poverty, violent crime between black communities and white communities almost disappear. I'm not begging for better gun laws. It's nearly impossible to get ourselves, all of us, out of the material conditions that lead to violence. The original meaning of pull yourselves up by your bootstraps, by the way. Let's not pretend like there isn't a difference when a police officer kills someone. Never mind the to protect and to serve motto thing. It's not likely the cop will lose their job, let alone serve time in prison, which is infuriating. Where do people go to seek justice in that case? Low clearance rate for murder aside, this doesn't apply when a civilian kills another civilian, and we hope that the police will do what it takes to put that person, that killer, behind bars. Or when a police officer is killed. Like that article I keep going back to, both Reverend Jesse Jackson and McNeil bitterly denounced, quote, a double standard which resulted in wholesale arrest and veritable siege of the black community after the shooting death of a white policeman, Detective James Alfano Jr., but failed to produce equal concern upon the attempted assassination of the Reverend Curtis Burrell, the burning of his church, or the killing of more than 70 black youths. You know, I actually prefer when any person, especially a black person, says, why aren't we talking about black on black crime? Because it lets me know they're not doing anything about it. Cat's out of the bag. We gonna be all right. Memberships are here, and thank you to George Kropog and Honk If You Love Beer for becoming the first two members on this channel. If you too would like to become a member, then ask these two, because I don't really know how they did that.